what's up, people? You know what time it is. It's Friday or Saturday, depending on when you watch this. Mandalorian Episode 3 has come out. It was so good. Really I just have to say that right off the bat. It was so good. Deborah Chow needs an action movie at some point in her career. Dude, one thing that this episode has like opened my eyes to is the yeah. fact that I'm more excited for Obi-Wan now because she's directing the episodes. It's from start to finish? I think so. Huh. Is she executive producer as well? or I don't know if she's EP. I don't know who's EPing. I just know she's directing. Okay. Either way, I'm excited because, well, she's very good... <laughs> Especially with atmosphere and, like, little to no dialogue moments, as this episode proves. Yeah. So let's just talk about the episode, I guess. Uh, this was way better paced than the previous two episodes were. Oh, yeah. Yeah, like, there's a lot of story. Mm -hmm. Like, you're on the tail end of, you know, the job. The kid's handed over, and Mondo is very guilty about it. His dad instincts kicked in. Yeah, because... He flashed back to when he was a kid as he was getting the armor from his payment for mm -hmm. taking the kid in the first place. Then he just kept thinking, I miss this kid. And then he do... goes back to rescue him. Yep. And then he uh, he made Batman and the Assassin Order proud. Yeah. Literally, I think he's the John Wick of <laughs> Star Wars. <laughs> See, now with that, if there is a John Wick 4, I want Deborah Chow directing. <laughs> That'd be an interesting... Uh, way to go about that i mean like people say keanu reeves is like like sort of a emotionless actor but i think she'd pull it off mm -hmm. literally that like kick flip into the cart i was like holy shit <laughs> i mean well, granted obviously it's not the biggest stunt but yeah. it was pretty badass oh yeah and then like you know with everyone blasting him literally just the call being like all right we're on the hunt for mondo like that, was, that alone yeah. literally was just John Wick. That was the, everyone's getting a page. That's the second one, right? Where he's John got, Wick too. Yeah, yeah, everybody's coming for him. Yeah, mm -hmm. I haven't seen. It. I just know. The I still have to see it. the third one. I've seen the first two. Halle Berry's in the third one, right? Yes. Okay. I feel like she's in more of them, but I can't remember. Oh, and uh, John Favreau's a Mandalorian again. Yes, again. For those who don't know, he was a Mandalorian, Prey Vizsla in the Clone Wars, and as the credits prove, he's another Vizsla. Yep. Though, not sure how they're related, but nah, I'll leave that up for the theory, people. Yeah. Did he die in the Clone Wars? Yeah, in uh, season five? Yeah, when he, like, had to deal with Darth Maul and all that. Yeah, he, he was to, he, he was killed at the hand of Maul, wasn't he? Yeah, they, they, they made that deal, you know, they would overthrow Satine, which they did, and then Vizsla's like, all right, I don't need Maul anymore, let's arrest him, which, you know, bad idea. Yeah. So v Maul came back and said, you know, one-on-one -on -one duel for the sake of the Mandalorian throne because that's how it works. And he said, okay, and then got his head chopped off. Because, you know, you've got but a jetpack and a lightsaber and you expected that would give you an edge over Darth Maul. Yeah. Was he the only Vizsla known at the time? Well, this was at, at the time of when the episode came out. It was before Disney bought it. Mm -hmm. So there was another Vizsla like 4,000 years ago-ish during the Old Republic era. Mm -hmm. But there isn't another Vizsla like in the modern in the modern day as we know. Because yeah. I don't think there was even a Vizsla in Rebels, as far as I know. Um, like, the, like I know, because you know, my brother wasn't wasn't Sabine related to it a Vizsla? I did look it up, even though I didn't see those episodes of Rebels. Because, as this kid knows, I love the Mandalorians. Yes. And after Dave Filoni said, you know, the power struggle on. You know, Mandalore being like Game of Thrones apparently wasn't just hyperbole. Hmm. Much like, you know, no minor houses in Westeros answered to a bigger house. Hmm. The clans answered to a to a bigger to a bigger house. So mm -hmm. it was like a house no house Mormon to the Starks. Sabine's clan was House Mormon, and Vizsla were the Starks. Got that it. kind of thing. Okay. So they were subordinate, but they weren't necessarily related. Got it. Because I feel like I remember it being mentioned. Or... She said, yeah, Clan Wren of House Vizsla. But yeah, it's it, it's it's a little confusing because, well, it's not exactly clear what, what state Mandalore is even in right now. Because like in, in Rebels, they say it was occupied by the Empire. And not that the Empire is not a thing, mm -hmm. but also something about a great 
purge, when I, which I'm pretty sure was never explained and never even mentioned in Rebels. Yeah, and based on the flashbacks we see in The Mandalorian in this episode alone, mm-hmm. it seems more like a prequel era thing because you literally see, literally see super battle droids in action. One of them's almost about to kill little Mondo. Though that does paint an interesting picture, though, of uh, seeing Clone Wars era live action that's not in the St- the Skywalker saga. Yeah, that is true. Although then again, Dave Filoni's the whole reason people like the prequel era now. So that's also true. <laughs> I mean, they're of two minds about the movies themselves, but they like the era. Yeah. Mostly because the Clone Wars did a really good job of telling that story. Oh, yeah. <sighs> also, uh, pretty much every Mandalorian helmet here is from the Old Republic and, like, the Legends era, and I love it. They look really badass. That whole thing where they came in at the end, like, when did that, like, what inspired them to get them out, like, for them to sh- just show up? Well, aside from the plot says so, because from a story perspective, that's yeah, what happened. That's literally all I yeah. was getting at that is... It happened because they said so. But I guess because, you know, everyone and their mother got the beacon beacon call. Yeah. So they probably found out about it and were like, "Uh (laughs) uh-oh. Well. Help their brother. Well, honestly, yeah. As I was coming here, I told Eric, you know, Vodean when he said he was ordering wings to eat while we were watching this. I don't know if the Disney canonized the language or the culture, but family is a huge thing. For Mandalorians, even mm-hmm. adopted, bloodwise or otherwise, that's why Jedi aren't really the reason they don't like the Jedi is more than anything is just the fact that you know families are no no once you're taken into the order. Mm. I think Rebels even made a point that there there was like one Jedi from their planet throughout like the Republic's history. Yeah, yeah. So I think that was why. So and family also doesn't just mean you know your blood. It just also means you know. Friends who are close enough to be brothers or mm-hmm. literally just like meeting your countrymen on a foreign planet, that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. There's even a proverb. I can't quote the whole thing because I don't remember in the native Mandalorian, but it says family is more than blood. Yeah. So when one guy's one, one bro is in trouble, we got to help him out. Mm-hmm. So it's probably that. Yep. Also, John Favreau in armor is a little funny just because his gut shows a little bit even through the armor. <laughs> When I think of John Favreau, I think of him being a little bit more heftier than what was present, but it's possible he lost weight. It is possible. Or it's just well shaped armor. Yeah. Now I'm thinking- Either way, he looks pretty cool. <laughs> now I'm picturing him in like going through like a Jonah Hill esque like fitness routine and he just looks oh, completely geez. different now. <laughs> That's true. Ah, what else about this episode? There's so much to like. I gotta get me one of those. That <laughs> that was also a good line. Just him flying out Iron Man style, which I have to say is very ironic, but it also makes sense. Well, because it's John Favreau, the director of Iron Man, flying out in the window, just looking like Iron Man. <laughs> well, if you want to think about it, the second armor we've seen in the we've seen the Mando in is completely silver, like the Mark II, and even that small missile system is just like when he goes to Afghanistan with the Mark III. John Favreau's armor himself, also, like his armor, yeah. kind of reminds me of the Mark I. Like, it's a little bit bulky and rusted like that. Mm-hmm. Again, not identical, obviously, by any means, yeah. but it makes you think of that. Yeah, definitely. It's also just funny, Pedro Pascal is, again, having to fight somebody who's physically much bigger than him. Yeah, the bickering brother scene. <laughs> Also, this is the way. Yes. That's a new meme right then and there. Yes. <laughs> Another quote for the uh, books, the books of Star Wars. Because you have, may the force be with you, of course. Mm-hmm. You have, I'm one with the force, the force with me. Yep. You have, I have spoken. <laughs> and now you have, this is the way. Yes. Which I can't help but say in a Jamaican accent now. Which one? This is the way? Yeah. This is the way. Oh, I'm thinking of Ugandan Knuckles. <laughs> Do you know the way? <laughs> Show me the way. You know that old uh, edit where somebody who clearly had too much time on his hands did a call me maybe, but it's all the prequel characters saying one word? Oh, yeah. How long till that becomes a meme out of the show? You can go your own way, 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 way. Who knows? Oh, no. I've inspired somebody to do it. Well, good job. <laughs> Another thing, uh, Deborah Chow... 
again with the directing, she really sells the uh, tension or like just emotion when there's no dialogue. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because that whole scene when uh, Baby Yoda's being given away, like, I felt so bad for him. I well, saw I saw it in his face. Yeah. And then Mondo's helmet, too. Yeah. Even though there's literally no, no ex- emotion, you feel it. Yes. But yeah, overall, she did a fantastic job with the direction of this episode. Because th- it provides, like, pretty much everything that you either want or you expect from a good, not film, but just a viewing experience absolutely because a well-balanced story because you have the right amount of action at the right time yeah you have so much heart because you know you learn about his more of his past i mean grant's the same thing but you see a little bit more of it Mm -hmm. and then you realize how that impacts him now with wanting to save the kid oh yeah and the biggest rule of uh visual storytelling show don't tell which she clearly took to heart Mm -hmm. although now this means uh I think the next episode is Bryce Dallas Howard's. I think so, yeah. She, uh, not Which that means, uh, not that we don't doubt her, but she's got a lot to live up to. <laughs> well, I mean, she had that either way. All the directors have that. Because, yeah. like, yeah, you have, you know, known directors like Taika Waititi already directing yeah. for Thor Ragnarok. So. Yeah. Rick Famuyiwa, who did Dope. Yeah. Dave Filoni, who's already really present in the Star Wars universe. Yeah. This was his first take on anything live action. Mm-hmm. So he had a lot to write on there. Yeah. And then... You know, Bryce Dallas Howard, she has big connections with Lucasfilm because of her dad. Mm -hmm. So, again, not that we doubt she'll do bad, but this was just a good episode. This was just a great episode. The first two, not that the first two were bad, but those two were paced in a way that they felt slow. I felt like if you crunched it a little bit more, like both into one episode. Yeah. I feel like that would have been more of a way to go. Yeah. But it also makes me think of how in previous shows, the first two episodes are basically the same story divided. Yeah. Well, not. That's the one. Or flaw. it's like a two-parter yeah. Uh, yeah. premiere. I that's guess. yeah. That's the one flaw of uh, Dave Filoni. I'll say. I I I can't speak for Rick Famuyiwa because I haven't seen Dope or his other stuff. Mm-hmm. If you pay close attention to Avatar: The Last Airbender or Star Wars: The Clone Wars, which you know Filoni was obviously in both mm-hmm. or involved in both, I should say, they both are a little slow paced. Like it takes time for the story to move forward or at least it feels like it feels that that way at least when you watch the first couple episodes because as entertaining as they were the first couple of episodes of the clone wars were okay yeah same for it it just felt strange too especially because one was just a huge jump and had nothing to do with the other it just felt random same for avatar the last airbender only this time it's a continuing story from start to finish but if i'm gonna be perfectly honest the first few episodes are not that good hmm but yeah, there's a lot to look forward to now. This episode was just the beginning of that. Let's see what uh, Gina Carano, Ming Na Wen, and everyone we haven't seen yet bring in. Yeah. One thing I am curious about, because there were some rumors, I was talking about this with my brother earlier, uh, that you see who saved Mondo in those flashbacks in, in future episodes. I mean, I wouldn't doubt it. Yeah, I'm wondering who it is. There's rumors that it's a Jedi. So I'm wondering what Jedi that is. Given the context of what we've seen, Mm -hmm. I really want to bet that it's Yoda. It's possible. Because think of it in the sense that it's Clone Wars era, because you can tell from the battle droids. Yeah. You haven't heard of any actors on set. Yeah. Unless they've been super secretive, but I highly doubt that. Yeah. So the easiest thing would be to either puppeteer or CG a character. Mm Mm-hmm. Who comes to mind with that? Master Yoda. Yep. Or the fact that you know, look at what we see in the episode so far. Who are we dealing with? A baby Yoda. Mm-hmm. And one reason that Mondo might be attached to this kid is because it reminds uh, reminds him of himself when he was being rescued by Master Yoda, if that's the case. It's possible. My guess was it was just a Mandalorian because, again, like I said, the importance of family and adoption being a big part. Usually orphans who, are, who they find on worlds where nobody's there to take care of them and if they feel like they're worth something they'll take them in that's also true because i'm just thinking that because if the rumors of a jedi are true that would make the most sense it would i'm just yeah yeah. but i'm just saying that also since apparently in the new canon every native born mandalorian usually speaks with a kiwi accent it doesn't seem like pedro's mandalorian was a native born son 
I only say like usually because Bo, Bo Katan and you know, John Favreau's first Mandalorian character previously had typical American accents. Mm-hmm. But well, who knows? Yeah. I think on that note, we'll just give our final thoughts here and call it a night or day, depending on again when you watch this. Fantastically paced, good show, don't tell moments. And uh, Baby Yoda is still the cutest thing ever. And uh, I'm still kind of hoping now that uh, under that helmet, it's Keanu Reeves just for the John Wick references. If it's that, people are going to be either so happy or so pissed. But also, I don't think they'd do that. They wouldn't do that to poor Pedro. No, Pedro. Pedro's too precious. Pedro's too beautiful for that. He really is. <sighs> but yeah, I definitely agree. Beautiful episode, well-paced. Freaking awesome action, awesome story. Just so much goodness. Like, I don't know why I'm, like, rambling about this. Because it's just like we liked it that much. Exactly. Because, like, again, the first two are good. They're fine. Like, you know, they introduce it well. But this one was definitely... This is the one where the groove, was, they found its groove, I would say. Let's put it this way. This is the way. This is the way to make the Mandalorian. <laughs> I'm just saying... Yeah, just because this of... is the way to make Star Wars. <laughs> Deborah Chow for a Star Wars film now. Yeah, I mean she's doing Obi Wan, so yeah. Like, yeah, I want to see her for Episode Ten if that ever happens. I don't think there will be an Episode Ten if it, at least well, not not Sky- in, yeah not anytime. not in the Skywalker saga yeah. anyway. Not anytime soon at least, but yeah. Well, we're gonna get going. Yep, but great episode. Uh like and subscribe and tune in for future episodes and uh leave a comment you know what are your thoughts on the mandalorian so far do you love it do you think it sucks do you think pete's lame for not joining us again let us know also remember to hit the bell button bell icon because this is the way show me the way (laughs) bye later